the proprietor of the Benjamin Dixon Show. Ben Dixon is joining me. Um, ben, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Sam's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, Ben, uh, let me uh, tell me, you know, I think there was some skepticism about impeachment um, over the past couple of weeks, particularly in the trial. There was some concern like, you know, would the, the, the Democrats be able to get to what they need to get to in terms of uh, of the covid relief bill? Right. We know that right now the committees are dealing with each part of the bill. They are preparing to do it through reconciliation. Um it's sort of a downtime. So that stuff is sort of a little bit obscured from public view. So impeachment has sort of filled that void. And give me your sense of how impeachment is going. I mean, surprisingly enough, I think the Democrats made um, a pretty convincing case because it was a pretty straightforward case, right? There's a direct line between what happened and Donald Trump. And the real question is, can they pick up enough uh, Republican senators to actually convict them? Uh, but I, I think the pre presentation was a, a, a lot stronger than the first time around. But again, I think it's because this case is that much easier to prove. Um, so the real question is, is are, are there, will there be any Republicans who will go along with the obvious here? All right, well, here's my answer. Probably not. I mean, right. we may, I mean, look, Collins, Murkowski, Romney, Sass, Toomey, mm -hmm. even I think Cassidy, they've all indicated at least some openness to the idea that there's jurisdiction here. Mm -hmm. And that may be, you know, and once they vote against Trump once, they've sort of set their uh, their their bed on some level. Uh, so they may join. It's also possible you could get like four or five more. Right. Like, right. You know, if I'm if I'm Cassidy, and 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 uh, and Toomey and, and Sassy and Sass and Ron, and I'm thinking like, you know, if we can get ten, if we can get four more people, we can at least project that we might be able to pass some uh, legislation with the Democrats in the future because that's the magic number, right? You need uh, you need ten, um, uh, you need sixteen for a conviction, but you need ten to pass legislation to get past. The filibuster. And so they may be positioning in such a way that you know we want to be partners in and basically putting the brakes on any type of like big uh, legislation. But um, I think there's also what's your sense of like how effective this is in in flipping the other way that when all these Republicans in the face of this refuse to vote against Trump, it's sending a signal to people like Joe Biden that, hey, look, dude, there's no partners over here. Right. We're not getting anywhere with these people. We're going to have to go this alone if you want to pass anything. Yeah, no, I, I certainly hope Joe Biden has that disposition already. Uh, but to your point, right, I think this is a clear example. This is that I don't want to overstate the simplicity of this particular case, but if we can't get Republicans to defend the Republic, right, um, then then what can we count on them for? And then maybe if that does push Joe Biden to just play some hardball for the next four years, um, I, I think that's beneficial too. So Republicans can turn this into a lose-lose situation if they're more interested in defending Donald Trump than they are the democracy. The, um, I mean, that that to me, I mean, the way you just, you, you put it there, it's like, if if you can't get the Republicans to vote that Donald Trump did something wrong here, right? what are you going to get them to vote for? Like, they're just, they are, they're a, the fever, it's, I mean, the point being, it's not a fever that to be breaking. Like, this is their normal temperature, right? right? Right. Yeah. No, that's it. This is this is their normal behavior pattern. This is not a this is not a symptom. This is this is the this is the problem. This is how they operate. This is how they show up. They play a level of absolutism of a Machiavellian politics, which they will not give us an inch, even if that means giving us an inch means defending this democracy. Right. So if they're going to play this zero sum game. Right. Winner takes all um, uh, real politic version of politics, uh, then then the Re Democrats have no choice but to respond in kind. The, the question I guess I have is, why did it take this incident for Democrats to re realize this when Republicans have really been operating like this since 2000, since the uh, uh, George W. Bush uh, election? Well, I don't know. You answer the question for me. I mean, what, <laughs> why, why do you think it's taken so long? I don't know.
I mean, if I give the Democrats the benefit of the doubt, I guess hope springs eternal, right? You know, you keep working and keep hoping that that maybe you're not dealing with uh, 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 just like nihilists who will destroy and see everything burn. Um, but after a while, you have to wake up and deal with what your what the reality says. The reality says that Republicans have been playing a scorched earth game, honestly, since uh, Newt Gingrich came into all, uh, power as Speaker of the House during uh, Bill Clinton's administration. They turned the corner there in our lifetime, maybe previous their previous examples, Maybe Democrats did this previously, but in our lifetime, the, the, the way the Democrat, uh, Republicans have been operating in this system since at least Newt Gingrich has shown us that we should never try to triangulate with them and we need to play hardball with them because they are waiting, they're lying in wait to play hardball with us. I mean, I, I, it is, I, it is amazing how, um, how persistent this notion that there's a partner on the other side um, has, has been, I mean, I'm just even thinking like it was three months ago where Diane Feinstein is congratulating Lindsey Graham on right. slamming through a, a Supreme court justice with like weeks to go. Right. Uh, there is just, there is some compulsion that they have. And, and I wonder if this will finally do it. I mean, you know, on some level, the, um, the, 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 the personal terror <laughs> that they, I mean, that we've seen them mm. have in these videos, yeah. you would think would do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would think, but then, then something else dawned on me. I, I think Democrats might actually know that they're dealing with extremists who would burn down this democracy. Cause imagine if Democrats operated exactly like Republicans operated in terms of uh, uh, holding the line, never, never triangulating, never seeking bipartisanship, shoving through. And if, if, if Democrats absolutely carry themselves the way Republicans did, I, I don't know how long this democracy could handle two parties operating that way. So there could be a little bit of, of um, fear in the Democratic Party to actually play hardball because they know they're dealing with ideological terrorists on the other side of the aisle. I mean, that is, the, uh, you know, we've seen that um, in, in the past where um, uh, certainly during like the fiscal cliff situation under the, the Obama administration, mm -hmm. the notion of like they're holding the hostages and they don't care. Like, you know, like, like Democrats, it is incumbent upon Democrats to even maintain the slightest, um, uh, I guess, hint of being Democrats that that they perceive government as being able to do something. And if you destroy it, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. But from from your perspective, as somebody from G Georgia, um, Ossoff and Warnock, they seem to be and not necessarily that their uh, their politics are ideologically, um, um, you know, more to the left, although maybe arguably they are than one would have expected for two senators from Georgia. But from a partisan standpoint, from a perspective of willing to fight and recognize what's going on on the other side, they seem to be um, of a, of cut from a different cloth than a lot of other Democrats, particularly ones you would imagine coming from what we consider should be a reddish purple state. Right, right. I, I think that, you know, I think Warnock and also for operating based on the knowledge of the change that happened in Georgia over the last, since um, really longer than since the gubernatorial race with Stacey Abrams, but certainly after that, there's been a, such a, an uptick in registrations that, that, that Georgia isn't solidly blue, but it's moving in that direction. And I, I feel like maybe they're operating based on the assumption that Georgia is going to continue moving that direction because it is something that you wouldn't expect from, uh, like you wouldn't expect this from uh, uh, Doug Jones over in, in, in Alabama, right? Right. Well, I mean, he's not there now, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think they're operating based on the assumption that Georgia is going to continue moving blue. But then also, if we just, you know, look at Warnock and his the, the, the black liberation religious tradition that he comes from, he's one of those people. He was going to go up there and speak truth to power no matter what. Uh, I just hope it continues. Right. Um, so apparently I'm being told that uh, Trump's lawyer uh, just called the impeachment trial constitutional cancel culture. <laughs> I he CCC, right? I think he he probably had another. Uh... We have this clip. Let's play this clip. Uh, this is just, I mean, this is like the, you know, I mean, Donald Trump has been the talk radiofication, I want to say, like uh, the, uh, the the circle has closed. Let's put it that way. I mean, it, it has been going on for years. Rush Limbaugh is about to uh, sign off permanently, it sounds like. And um, but he is the one who sort of unleashed this on uh, America, frankly. Here's that clip. In effect, 
Congress would be claiming that the right to disqualify a private citizen, no longer a government official, from running for public office. This would transform the solemn impeachment process into a mechanism for asserting congressional control over which private citizens are and are not allowed to run for president. In short, this unprecedented effort is not about Democrats opposing political violence. It is about Democrats trying to disqualify their political opposition. It is constitutional cancel culture. History will, will, will record this shameful effort as a deliberate attempt by the Democrat Party to smear, censor, and cancel not just President Trump, but the 75 million Americans who voted for him. Um. You know, this is it's conservative aggrievement. Um, I want to say 2.0, but it's really like 25.0. Right. I mean, this has been we've we've seen this, you know, in, in so many iterations. But their argument is that um, despite the fact that the Senate has already ruled on right. the jurisdiction in this instance, yes. uh, and this is a political process. Democrats, uh, you know, he's arguing they'll pay a political price if he is kept from running again. Well, OK, but that's not a defense. Right. Now you're just like um, analyzing what what the outcome of the trial could be. I mean, what's your sense? No, no, that's exactly right. He's saying I don't like the potential outcome of this. Therefore, we should not go through with this. But that's enough for Republicans to justify not voting uh, to convict Donald Trump. So it, it, their job, a lot of times uh, the propagandists, um, whether it be Fox News or whether it be his defense uh, attorneys, um, their one job is to give conservatives a glimmer of hope, something that they can hang on to when nothing else is there. And I think they're going to run with this constitutional cancel culture. That's going to be the talking point for a while. Yeah, I mean, maybe years, uh, Frank. I mean, this is what's what's interesting about this is and and it's it's early right i mean it's early in the biden administration but what i'm starting to see the outlines of are two parties one that is engaging in let's put the democrats aside for a moment the republicans do not seem to be engaging you know like we we've had this 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 quality where you know fox news started to create a a a second media narrative right mm. That is moving along. When 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 I started doing this 15, 20 years ago, the idea was like, OK, Fox tries to promote something. It gets into Drudge. Drudge yeah. sort of like is the gateway to get it into like the network news and cable news, because a lot of the the those producers would look at this stuff. And um, and that was what the plan was then over the past four or five years, six years, maybe seven years, eight years. It's been growing in this fashion since uh, since Limbaugh launched uh, in 88 or 90 um, that this narrative is now running parallel. These two media narratives are running parallel and they don't need to combine. And it also now it feels like that's happening with the governance by these different political parties. Like mm. the Republicans are not engaging in the covid relief whatsoever. A couple of them went over and said, here's something that we know you're going to reject. And that's it. There's no there doesn't there seems to be two tracks that are going on in terms of the way that our governance is going. Yeah, no. And it actually parallels like uh, reality versus fiction. Right. There's this parallel world that they've created in order to give themselves some kind of solace because they absolutely Republicans, conservatives know that their ideology just does not work in the real world. That doesn't matter. We have a propaganda machine that can create an alternate reality. And so likewise, like we have it not only in media, we have it in, in public office now because there's no political price to pay so long as they can get enough votes to win. Well, that's the point, right? Like they don't even have like there's no argument of you barely hear them talking about even the deficit. You mm -hmm. You hear them talking about we need more tax credits or whatever it is. There's no they're do, they don't even seem to be offering anything for that. And they don't seem to need it. Mm. Fox News is not sitting there going talking about the deficit or in any real way or any of the, the sort of like governance talking points. It is all just about cancel culture or, right. you know, they'll do 45 minutes on the, the cat, uh, the lawyer with the cat video because they're just like. They're just living in a completely different world. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cat video was, that was the best time spent on Fox News in the last 
through however long they've been in existence. But no, I mean, but to, to your point, man, it, it really has become, um, it's become such a hermetically sealed bubble right? This echo chamber is now so perfectly sealed that they have no responsibility to even take care of the material conditions of their listeners because they can give them everything else to be a distraction, including the bigotry, including the white supremacy, including the fear of cancel culture, including the war on Christmas, whenever that comes back around. Like they, 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 they have found their toolkit to always engage with their audience outside of reality. Even the even calling it constitutional cancel culture is really just like sort of appealing to that uh, that entire sort of narrative of aggrievement that the uh, the the conservatives feel, and it's all simply a cultural argument. Right, right. And then if you if you actually go to the logical conclusion of their arguments, then they also have to conclude that those those rioters, those treasonous uh, insurrectionist terrorists that marched up the steps have a constitutional right to overthrow this government. Right. They're not going to take it there because who cares about logic and logical extensions of their arguments? Uh, all they care about is setting the framework that they need to defend Donald Trump's honor and to keep getting the clicks and the views that Fox News needs. I wonder if that's where they go next. Frankly, I mean, honestly, I would, I would be surprised. 